Hey guys, this is Test 43, Game 4. This is the Lunch Trucks game. Now, I've set up a lot of stuff here on the diagram, but don't worry, I'm going to explain all of that. For now, just focus on the top diagram here and the rules diagrammed on the left. So they tell us that the F, H, and exactly one other thing go on Y. So I've got the trucks X, Y, and Z, the different trucks F, H, I, P, S, T. They tell us that all six of them are going to be going because they said each truck serves one or more of the buildings. So I've got the first rule, F, H, and exactly one other thing are serving Y. They tell us that F goes exactly twice, so I've got 2F written on the left here. Of course, we've already used up one of the Fs on Y. Next, they tell us that I serves more than Z, so I put I is greater than S. I serves more than S, so I is greater than S with regard to quantity. We've got F and P never go together, so I've got a slash through that little box there regarding them. So we can automatically infer that F is never going with P on Y. P could never be on Y, period, because F has to be there. Next, we've got that T goes on exactly two buildings that are also served by I. So I've got two IT vertical boxes here. So this is pretty much the initial setup. You know, they put tells T's not Y, so I've got T's not under Y there. But I create now two different main diagrams based upon the placement of the two F's, because there's got to be two of them exactly. One of them's already used. So we can make two different diagrams, one with F on X and not Z, and one with F on Z but not X. So I'll put down, you know, on the top diagram, F is on X and then therefore not on Z. Bottom diagram, F is on Z, so therefore it is not on X. Now we can make a few inferences here. We can infer that because F and P never go together, on the top diagram, P is not going on X, and in the bottom diagram, P is not going on Z. Now the thing is, P's got to go somewhere. It can't go on X or Y in the top diagram, therefore P has to go on Z in that diagram. And in the bottom diagram, because F cannot go on either Z or Y, P must go on X in that diagram. So things are starting to take shape here. Now, we know that T can never go on Y in either diagram, therefore these IT vertical boxes must go on both X and Z no matter what. So I've got I, T on X and Z in the top diagram, starting to place that. On the bottom diagram, same thing. We've got to have I and T on both X and Z. So things have really started to shape up here. Now, we know that neither T nor P could go on Y, and we've already got F and H there and exactly one other thing. So that one other thing on both of these diagrams will be either I or S we don't know exactly which of the two, but it will be one of those two things just because there are only six, dot, six variables in the game. So this is essentially our initial setup for the game. Let's go on to the question starting with number 18. For 18, we've got where could F go? A complete accurate list of where F could go. So in the top diagram, we've got F on X and Y. In the bottom diagram, we've got F on Y and Z. So the answer to this question will have to be X, Y, or Y, Z. D says Y, Z, and X, Z does not appear, so D is our answer to number 18. Next, number 19, which pairing of trucks must occur together at least once? So do we always have H and P together? Doesn't even have to happen on either diagram. A is gone. Must we have to have H and T together? H doesn't need to be anywhere other than Y, where we do not have T. Of course, H could be elsewhere as well, but not necessarily, so for that reason, B is gone. Next, C, I, and P. We have them together on Z in the top diagram and together on X in the bottom diagram, so that is a must, and C is our answer to 19. I will look at the rest, though. Must we have I and S together? Well, S you know, could occur only on Y, for example, and that's I slash S, meaning what, exactly one of the two, not both. So. We could have one of the two on Y, but not both of them, and there's no reason to think that I and S ever have to go together, so D is gone. Looking at E, S, and T, again, S could be only on Y and nowhere else, and of course, T is not on Y, so E is gone, leaving C for number 19. Next, number 20, if I serves fewer buildings than H, meaning H is greater 
than i, and we are in quantity, frequency. And of course we know that i is always greater than s, so h is greater than i, which is greater than s in quantity. Therefore we know h would be going three times, we'd have i going two times, and s going only one time. So in this situation, two i's, these are the only two i's in the game, the i, t on x and z. I could not be on Y, meaning that S would be on Y in both of these diagrams, and H would be on all three trucks, X, Y, and Z, in both of these diagrams. So now they're asking us, who must serve exactly the same buildings as each other, meaning and no others? So I and T will only occur on X and Z and no others. So their placements are identical. They're asking us for which pairing has identical placements, of course, it is I and T, choice E. So E is our answer to number 20. Of course, I'll go through the others. A, you know, F and H having identical placements. No, H is three times, but there are only two Fs in the game. So for that reason, that's impossible. A is gone. F and S, we have one S, but two Fs. So for that reason, their placements could not be identical. B is gone. I and P. We have only one P in the game, either on Z or on X. And of course, we're going to have two I's in this scenario, so C is gone. Looking at D, I, and S, again, I is twice, S is once, D is gone, leaving E if you didn't get it before. Next, number 21, they're asking us here for which trucks could serve all three buildings. As we just saw from the previous quest question, H could easily do all three. So any choice not mentioning H is automatically eliminated. This gets rid of both C and E, which exclude H from their lists. We know that F could not ever serve all three, so any choice containing F would have to be eliminated, but F is never a choice in any of these. P only goes exactly once. It's either on Z or on X. So any choice mentioning P is automatically eliminated. This gets rid of D. So we're now down to A and B, H, I, or H, S. We know that S serves fewer than I, so for that reason S could never serve all three, and B is gone, leaving H, leaving A by elimination, H and I. And of course, while I serves with T exactly twice, there's no reason to think I couldn't serve on Y as well instead of S there, so A works. And that's our answer to number 21. Which truck can't go on both X and Z? So we see that I and T, of course, could easily go on both, so B and E are automatically eliminated. We also know that P is going exactly once. So P is either on Z or on X, but never on both. So for that reason, C is our answer to 22. I will look at the rest, though. Could we have H going on both X and Z? Of course, H could go on all three, as we've already established back in number 20. So for that reason, A is eliminated. Now looking at D, S going on both X and Z. You know, maybe I goes three times, S goes twice. We don't know. There's no reason to think that couldn't work, so D is gone, leaving C for number 22.